Hello everyone, this is uh, John McDonald with Silly Rabbit Tuning. Today I'm going to be walking you through on how to flash your uh, DL501 transmission tune onto your Audi S6 or S7. Uh, first step you're going to get is we're going to send you an email that's going to have the SRT flash tool in it. Um, you're going to install that, you're going to allow all the drivers to install. Uh, from there you're going to open the SRT flash tool. You're going to see this icon here. It says unpacking flash tool. You need to make sure that you have your cable plugged into the OBD2 port and you need to have the USB end of the cable plugged into your laptop itself. From there, the login screen is going to pop up. Um, I have uh, this account set up. You're going to enter your username and password. That's going to be provided by Silly Rabbit Tuning. You're going to get this sweet photo with that RS7 there. Once you get here, the next step is going to be to program transmission. You're going to click program transmission in the middle of the screen. It says now power up the ignition, but do not start the engine. Press yes when complete or no to cancel. Uh, at this point, you need to make sure you have the key on engine off. OBD2 port uh, is has the cable plugged into it, as well as the uh, laptop has the USB cable plugged in. You're going to click yes. From there... It's going to go through its procedure. It's going to make sure that the car is actually on and that your OBD2 cable is plugged in. It has done that. It's now looking for updates from the server. It's skipping the firmware update as the car is currently, or the cable itself is currently up to date. It is now connected to the server. It's discovering the TCU. From there, it's going to spit out what type of controller you have. So in this particular car, you'll see the client is John McDonald. It is a... Um, 4G192 7156 Sierra and then the software version is S0011. So now that's going to go ahead and um, tell you what box code is actually in the car. Now there are a couple of occasions where, uh, for instance, I've seen some cars come back and uh, see it's usually with the uh, 4G192, I, I can't remember the rest of it, but it's uh, it ends with Fox. And then the software version ends up being uh, 0004, uh, whereas the most recent version that's come out is 0007. So what we end up doing is there's a, a procedure where we end up pushing you the most up-to-date version of the DL501 transmission software for your specific car. So... Uh, I've got the client set up there, and then I actually have my personal information in here, and I'm not going to share that. But um, above here where it says binary controller, you're going to enter your personal information, and the server is going to validate that you are who you say you are. It is going to um, link that information to your car. So you're going to enter your personal information, make sure all of that's in there, and you're going to click confirm. All right, now the personal information in there has been confirmed. From there... You're gonna come up here, you're gonna select the transmission control unit that you've got. Um, so now we make sure that the controller information here matches the controller information in the binary up top there. And now we've got our selection of files here that's gonna drop down. So in this case, um, you'll see we've got the stock file there and then you'll see this code here, alpha November. That is the most recent file that I have written for my car. That's a, a nomenclature that I use for um, software development it usually goes AA, AB, AC, AD, so on and so forth. Uh, so you can see I've tried quite a few different uh, files to get to this point and this is actually probably the third or fourth time I've started that alphanumeric uh, pattern there. But anyways, it's neither here nor there. So in this menu here you're going to get a uh, stock file and you're also going to see uh, stock turbo file and then there will also be rs7 turbo file and then there'll be an rs7 plus four millimeter turbo file so after you've entered your personal information above you're going to select the calibration that you want in my case i'm going to be selecting alpha november so then from alpha november i come over here and i click confirm now that sets me up for the last phase which is actually fla flashing the ecu itself so now i click program now everything grays out and you'll see it's a skipping firmware update from server. It says it's connected. Now the next step that it's going to do is download the actual um, file itself and it's going to get that set up for flashing. So it's preparing that for flashing now. Files prepared. Now it's downloading the binary 
binary downloads. It does a pre-flashing DTC mass erase to ensure that there are no codes in the car prior to flashing. Just to prevent anything from interrupting. From here, it takes a moment to get that done. And the next thing we're gonna see is actually um, flashing the binary. There it goes. Now it started flashing sector one. So it's gonna go through sector one, and this part here takes about uh, probably three to five minutes, somewhere in that range. I've never actually timed it, but um, it does have a task bar up here and it, and it lets you know that everything is going through. Uh, when you are flashing these ECUs, with this uh, server-based software, you need to make sure that you have an internet connection and that you have good battery power on the car. Um, if you, your battery itself is questionable in any way, shape, or form, you wanna make sure that you have an actual charger on the vehicle to ensure that it's charging while you are um, running the flash. That way there's no chance that the, the flash itself ends up dropping out. Uh, one of the cool things about this program is that after it downloads the binary to the actual OBD2 dongle itself and begins the flashing process, uh, you no longer need an internet connection. So in the event that the internet connection drops out at this point or anything along those lines, uh, the car will continue flashing normally just fine. Uh, pretty much the only thing you can do at this point that's going to uh, cause any issues would be if you were to grab the cable itself and disconnect it from the laptop or grab the cable itself and disconnect it from the actual OBD2 port. Um, that's the only thing that's really going to cause any major issues. And then just for funsies and just because I like to test things and see if it works, I have yanked the USB cable out of the laptop. I have yanked the OBD2 cable out of the, the port while it was mid flash and I was able to get everything back up and running again, I strongly do not recommend doing that as there is always the risk that the controller itself could be bricked uh, in the process of interrupting a flash at any point in time. Um, but I have not personally experienced that yet, so I cannot for say sure I, I cannot say for sure that it's something that's actually going to happen. Um, but the transmission control module in these cars is physically located inside the transmission. So in the event that you do <laughs> end up breaking a transmission control module, fingers crossed, doesn't happen, haven't seen it happen yet, but in the event that it does happen, uh, the transmission is going to um, need to be at a minimum accessed in order to uh, program the um, the car again or get the the ECU itself replaced but uh, by and large again I haven't seen any actual issues with this yet it's it's run very smoothly I've been really really happy with the service space that we that we've got um, the customer support that we receive is absolutely top-notch I I cannot um, begin to express the gratitude that I have towards um, our server guys they they take really really good care of us and I'm really really happy with them um, but by and large uh, this is hands down without a doubt the easiest transmission flashing utility I have ever used I mean it's just so simple you log in you select what file you want to flash you click go and then a few minutes later it's all done flashing I mean I think right now we're at about three minutes and we're 83 percent done once it hits 90 percent it'll start It'll switch over and it'll say flashing sector two. Uh, sector two will begin flashing. And then at the uh, completion of this process, it's going to um, say that uh, it does a post DTC erase and then it walks you through. There it goes, it started flashing sector two. It ends up walking you through how to um, basically clean up the, uh, the flash. So it, at the end of this, it's going to end up telling us to power off the ECU. And so you do that by pressing the engine start stop button. Looks like we're at 99% now. There's 100%. So it's begun our DTC flashing, our uh, post flashing DTC erase. Upon completion of the post flashing DTC erase, it's going to give us a set of instructions, which should be popping up here any second should say controller successfully programmed there it is 
and then there's going to be another menu that pops up here momentarily. But ultimately, it's just going to tell me to power off ignition. There it is. So now I shut the ignition off, press enter to continue. It's going to go through a 10 second countdown timer to allow everything to clear out. At the end of the 10 seconds, it's going to ask me to power up the ECU again. So I hit the power button. Nope. The next time you hit the power button, it's going to shut the car off. So just be ready for that. So then hit the power button one more time. It comes back on. Press enter to continue. It says power up the ignition, but do not start the engine. Ignition has been powered up. I hit enter to continue. It tells me to power off the ignition. There we go. And now we're set and ready to start the engine. Hit enter and we are done. I can start the car. There we go. The next thing that I like to do is I break out my VCDS cable. You know, I'm gonna make a separate video for that. I'm gonna start that up here momentarily.